Greetings everybody, Maximus here, and welcome back to my little channel. So before we start, I have a question for you to think about and comment on, but after you watch the video. But does it matter to you if you're flying on a plane that's flying autonomously, meaning by AI or a computer? Or do you prefer a pilot flying your plane, you know, old school? Let me know down below. But your personal feelings aside, automated commercial passenger aircraft are coming whether you like it or not. And they're coming sooner than you think. Well, actually just in a matter of months. And honestly, I can't believe it's taken this long considering planes have had autopilot and auto landing for decades now, so why not auto takeoff as well? However, I think the main sticking point has been and continues to be the acceptance of the flying public as they see this final step may be a bridge too far and a slippery slope to removing the pilot from the equation altogether. And that being said, I imagine in a matter of years, commercial aviation will finally scale that mountain as well. However, now 60 years later, the world of commercial aviation is preparing for a similar technological leap as the world's third largest aircraft manufacturer, Brazil's Embraer, is introducing and implementing a similar technology. But now they will be using it for takeoff on commercial flights as well as the landings and of course with the fully automated autopilot for the cruise mode in between. Thus relegating pilots to highly paid, well-dressed cockpit babysitters. You are watching Maximus Aviation. Called the E-2 Enhanced Takeoff System, named after the family of aircraft is designed for the Embraer E-2 series. According to Embraer, the technology will not only improve safety by reducing pilot workload, but it will also improve range and takeoff weight, allowing the planes that use it to travel farther. Patrice London, Principal Performance Engineer at Embraer, who has worked on the project for over a decade, said, The system is safer than its human pilots. Hmm, well I'm pretty sure the world's pilot unions will have something to say about that. But Embraer's theory is that the new technology is better than actual pilots because the automation is pre-programmed to function the same way every time. Thus, it takes human error out of the equation. So if you execute 1,000 takeoffs, London said, you will get 1,000 of the same exact takeoffs each time. London added that they have already started flight testing and plan on getting their auto takeoff system approved by World Aviation Authorities for use in just a few months, beginning in 2025, before introducing its full implementation from select airports. However, Embraer isn't the first to develop the technology, but they will be the first to implement it. You may recall about five years ago in January of 2020, Airbus demonstrated its ATOL system or autonomous taxiing takeoff and landing system when they successfully performed the first fully automatic AI vision-based takeoff using an Airbus family test aircraft at Toulouse Airport. However, Airbus has no plans as of yet to implement a system. Embraer, however, is not only following Airbus's lead, but putting their system into action. As for pilot training, Embraer expects the training required to be simple. Luis Carlos Afonso, Embraer Senior Vice President of Engineering and Technological Development said, We think because it is a novel or a new system, we should have some training, he said. We've seen in the industry that sometimes you try to save on training, but this may then have adverse consequences. Wow, this dude is a real Captain Obvious. But Carlos continued adding that the automatic system mimics manual takeoff procedures. However, small but key changes mandate the need for additional pilot training. Adding that we believe that the training just to explain how the system works so that the pilot has a full awareness of how it works will prepare them to operate it. And we believe it's good practice to have training. But it will be very simple because the changes in terms of the operation are minimal. Embraer introduced the enhanced takeoff system at the Farnborough International Air Show in July of 2024. The system is a function of the E2 family's 4th Gen Full Authority Fly-by-Wire system which provides a high level of integrity and availability with its triplex redundant flight control computers and quadruplex air data sensors. The system is designed to reduce takeoff distances by providing precise, consistent control of pitch angle, which increases the payload range and performance of larger aircraft taking off from short runways. The E-2TS is planned to be available in the fourth quarter of 2025. 
The system will also increase safety, London says, reducing pilot workload in crosswinds and engine failures. Embraer calculates that from runway limited London City Airport, the system will add 350 nautical miles of range. Takeoff distance is measured from brake release to an altitude of 35 feet, called the screen height. Longer aircraft like the E-195E2 have a pitch limit to avoid tail strikes, and this sets takeoff distance. With the E-2TS, when the aircraft is a few feet in the air, the system automatically begins a continuous pitch increase to a higher angle, reaching screen height sooner. When operating from a short runway, this reduction in takeoff distance can translate into more range for the same payload, or even more payload for the same route with a thrust reduction. Embraer says that the E2TS is being certified as a fail passive system. This means the system disengages with a single failure and the pilot easily assumes control and safely continues to take off. The automation is designed to mimic the manual takeoff procedure with two key differences that require dedicated pilot training to be mandatory. After lining up on the runway, the pilot must first engage the system by calling up the system's page on the multifunction control display unit and pressing a button. An E2TS indication appears on the primary flight display. The pilot also engages the autopilot and auto throttle on the ground. This is a change from the current procedures which prohibit autopilot engagement before liftoff. This is not a certification rule, but is a means of compliance, London says. Embraer is discussing an alternate method of compliance with regulators to permit autopilot engagement on the ground. The other key change comes during the takeoff roll. The only thing you have to focus on is not to rotate the aircraft and allow the aircraft to rotate itself. Because if you rotate it, the system will disengage and hands over the autopilot to the standard autopilot. Embraer says it's not that the E2TS will give the aircraft back to the pilot. Well, duh. If you've seen 2001, we learned that from Hal. Anyway, Embraer says that it's that the autopilot mode will move from E2TS to flight path, which is vertical mode of the autopilot. At 400 feet, the lateral mode engages, and you can take your hands off the yoke. After that, the standard operating procedures are the same, the callouts and everything. And if the E2TS system fails, the callout is one that the pilot is used to on the aircraft. The plane says autopilot, autopilot, so they don't need to learn anything new. Whenever a pilot hears autopilot, autopilot, they know they have control. Amazingly, the human-machine interface is the same. Embraer says that's why they believe the training will be very easy, saying that pilots need to know and be comfortable with how the system operates, but it will be second nature for them. Although it's designed to improve performance, the E2TS also will improve safety, London says. In 2018, Embraer revamped some of the models in the family with new engines, wings, and avionics, calling them the E2. There are two variants now in service, the E-190E2 and the slightly larger E-195E2, seating up to about 140 passengers, which puts them in direct competition with the Airbus A220. Just over 120 E-2 aircraft have been delivered so far, with Canada's Porter Airlines, Brazil's Azul, and the Netherlands' KLM City Hopper currently the largest operators. Embraer has orders for about 200 more. It's on these planes that the company is going to introduce its new automated takeoff system. Embraer says if you're a pilot, you have to give some room for error. But because this system is so precise and consistent, you don't need the same margins. And you can operate closer to the optimum in the initial rotation as if you were closer to touching with the tail. Except you will not, they say. They say they've tested the system in failure cases, especially when you lose an engine. It's amazing how you get a workload reduction, especially during a failure. Whenever you reduce the workloads, you make for a safer operation. But rest assured, Embraer says this is not a first step towards total automation or even getting rid of one of the pilots. We are just adding one phase, which is the takeoff phase, where you can now have the autopilot engaged, they say. But it's far from autonomous, because the pilot is there, and if there's a failure, the pilot is the one that will take control. Oh, well I feel better now.
According to Gary Critchlow, an aviation analyst at Aviation News Limited, at this stage he says it's too early to tell how the benefits touted by Embraer for the system will translate into the real world, in principle allowing the system to select and perform the optimal takeoff profile automatically seems like an extension of what has become standard practice in other parts of the flight envelope rather than a radical step towards fully autonomous aircraft. But he says, as with every other system enhancement ever created, he adds, it all comes down to the implementation. Whether the system is as readily retrofitable as expected, whether it proves to need no additional training, how well it handles real-world operation, and of course, whether it actually results in a significant improvement in operational efficiency, he says only time will tell. So what do you think? Is it a good idea, or are the AI overlords forcing autonomous aircraft on the flying public, whether we like it or not? Well, that's all I have for now. Be sure to let me know down below what you think. Is it good? Is it bad? Do you care? Don't you care? You know, I won't know until you let me know down below. Oh, and remember, until next time, yeah, this is Maximus. <laughs>